Salvete discipoli. In today's lesson, we will reinforce our knowledge of the newly learned dative case endings and usage by reading a story using the dative. It's Quintus's birthday. He got a discus for his birthday and he wants to go throw it. Caecilius Quinto discum dedit, quod diem natalem celebrabat. Okay, so Caecilius, nominative singular, that's going to be our subject. Um, but before we translate the verb, let's just review again. When we have a dictionary entry given to us, we are going to have, um, throughout Unit 1, we're going to have the present tense first, followed by the perfect tense, followed by the present tense translation. Okay, so if it were dot, we would translate it as gives, but it's not dot, okay? So look up there, it's dead it. If it's dead it, it's perfect tense, and we will translate it as Caecilius gave, we need a direct object, a discus. Now he gave a discus to Quintus, okay? So this is our dative singular ending for a second declension noun or name. Now, we can translate dative with the preposition to. Um, in our introductory videos, we also learned that sometimes you'll want to translate dative with the preposition for. Um, but in this case here, when dative is used for what we call indirect object, another perfectly uh, acceptable translation, instead of Caecilius gave a discus to Quintus, in English, you could say Caecilius gave Quintus a discus, okay? But in Latin, there's only one way to express this concept, and the preferred word order here is going to be nominative subject first, then the dative, okay? Then the direct object in the accusative, followed by the verb. Caecilius gave a discus to Quintus because he was celebrating his birthday. If you're not aware what a discus is, here's a picture of an early Olympian, okay? So the discus is, it's usually made from like some type of ceramic, okay? And it's in the shape of a disc, and the athlete will hold it as so, they'll spin around, and then they'll try to throw it as far as possible. Tum Caecilius filium ad termas duxit, ubi palaestra erat. Okay, then Caecilius, once again, let's review how do we look at our dictionary and translate accordingly. Most of the time, people, anymore, most of the time, the verb is going to be this second item. Okay, perfect tense. So, then Caecilius led his son to the baths where there was an exercise yard. Now, first off, don't, just don't, don't forget, there is a way to say to when we mean direction to something, okay? Dative is used when you give something to someone, offer something to someone, show something to someone. But when you lead someone to a place, you'll never use dative for that. You'll still use the preposition odd, which is followed by the accusative. Here's an accusative plural. He led his son to the baths, where there was an exercise yard. Now, I'm going to be translating this for the rest of the story as just where there was a pal pal palaestra, okay? But what the palaestra was, it was an open area. This is the palaestra in Pompeii, okay? So it's just a wide open field where people would like wrestle, they might box. And what we're going to learn, this is where we're going to actually practice throwing this discus. Servus quinto discum ferebat. A slave was carrying the discus. Now here's a case where you could theoretically carry something to someone, but the idea is Caecilius and Quintus are on their way somewhere. There is a slave accompanying them. He's the one carrying the discus. So he's actually carrying the discus for Quintus, okay? Same word order that we had with the indirect object, okay? And again, that is the dative singular ending 
for second declension nouns or names. We're going to, in the course of the story, see all of the dative singulars and plurals of um, first, second, and third declension eventually. Caecilius et filius postquam termas intraverunt ad palaestram contenderunt. Caecilius and his son, okay, so I've put I put his in parentheses because it's not in the Latin, but you might want to add it for your English. And by the way, if you were ever translating for like a, a story that was like being given credit for translation, you don't have to use the parentheses. Okay, you could just write Caecilius and his son, and it would be a perfectly acceptable translation. After they entered the baths, hurried to the palaestra. Turba ingens in palaestra erat. There was a huge crowd in the palaestra. Quintus multos juvenes atletas pugiles conspexit. Quintus caught sight of many young people, athletes, boxers. Pompeiani atletis notissimis statuas posuerunt, inquit Caecilius. The Pompeians have placed statues, okay? So this is the past tense of the verb ponet, meaning to place, posuerunt, they placed. Direct object, accusative plural there. They have placed the statues. Now look what we have here. These are dative plurals. This ending here, a long I-S, would be pronounced like notissimis, okay, this E-S ending. This is the dative plural ending for first and second declension nouns, okay? So they have placed statues for very famous athletes, said Caecilius. So what this means, as they're looking around, there's like there's a few random statues that are around, and what they're statues of is statues of famous athletes. In palaestra erat porticus ingens. In the palaestra was a huge portico, or also called colonnade okay what this is this here you know this wide open field area this is the palaestra this is where people are exercising but completely surrounding this you know large courtyard is this structure that has all these columns and a roof over it okay so one thing we could call this we could call it a portico and that's indeed borrowed from the latin or we could call it a colonnade okay so there's shade in here the people who are standing like right in here they can look into the you know this courtyard area and they can see like the action like watch boxing matches going on watch people wrestling watch people throwing a discus in a little bit okay and we're going to learn in an upcoming chapter this portico is also where quintus goes to school believe it or not spectatores in portico stabant spectators were standing in the colonnade okay because again this way they're in the shade Servi spectatoribus vinum offerebant. Slaves were offering, imperfect tense ending, were offering. Direct object vinum, they were offering wine. Now what's left over is a dative plural, spectatoribus, to the spectators. This ibus ending is the dative plural ending for a third declension noun. Now, be aware, when you put that ibus ending on, the accent is going to shift to the vowel immediately before the ibus, okay? So if this were just nominative, it would be spectator, okay? But when we put the ibus ending on, spectatoribus. Quintus turbam prope porticum vidit. Quintus. Now, look at this, people. Here's the dictionary entry of the verb to see. You notice this is a very subtle difference, okay? Sometimes the perfect looks very different. In this case, the only difference between the present tense and the perfect tense in terms of the root is that 
the root of the present tense is a short i, widet, okay? But the root of the perfect tense is a long i, weedit. Quintus saw a crowd near the colonnade. Atleta ingens in media turba stabat. A huge athlete was standing in the middle of the crowd. Quis est atleta ille rogavit Quintus? Who is that athlete? Okay, now this word ille, which is translated here as that, okay? So this is an adjective here describing atleta, okay? Atleta is a first conjugation noun but it is masculine in this case because the athlete is masculine. We learned also the same thing was true of the noun agricola, farmer. Okay, so ille is the masculine nominative singular form of this adjective that means that. Ille est milo, atleta notissimus respondit Caecilius. That is milo. A very famous athlete, responded Caecilius. Remember, just like the name Grumio, where Grumio in the accusative became Grumio Nem, we had to add an N, you may recall. The same thing's going to happen here with Milo. If we were to put that in the accusative, it would be Milonem, and we're going to also have that N when we put the dative ending on this name very shortly. Caecilius et Quintus ad milonem contenderunt. Okay, so again, it's because it's motion toward that we are using ad, okay? We would translate this as Caecilius and Quintus hurried to Milo, but we would not use dative here, okay? We, we would use dative when we have to Milo in the sense of gave something to Milo, but in the sense of hurried to Milo, once again, we use the preposition ad followed by the accusative. Quintus atletae discum novum ostendit. Quintus showed the new discus to the athlete. Okay, so here is the dative singular ending for a first conjugation noun. Take note of something very important. That form puellae is the dative singular. In this case, it definitely is the indirect object. He showed the discus to the athlete. That same exact form is also the nominative plural. Okay, so if you were ever shown this noun in isolation and asked, what is this? The proper answer is, well, it's more than one thing. Okay, it's the nominative plural, it's the dative singular. We're going to learn it's even a third thing. There's a case called the genitive, and the same ending is that as well. In context, however, you're always going to know which it is, because if this were nominative plural, this verb would have to be plural. Okay, so since the verb is singular, the verb has to have a singular subject, and the U.S. Ending is the nominative singular, and then by default, puellae has to be, in this case, dative singular. Milo postquam discum inspexit ad mediam palaestram procesit. Milo, after he inspected the discus, proceeded to the middle of the palaestra. Atleta palaestram circum spectavit at discum a miss it. The athlete looked around the palaestra and now look at this verb here. Just again, so you can become a little more acquainted with what the possibilities are with these irregular perfect tenses. A mit it is the present tense. In the past tense perfect, the two T's turn into an S. A miss it throws or sends away. The athlete looked around the palaestra and threw the discus, okay? This would be like, for instance, if you were given a football as a gift, and then like 
Oh, oh my gosh, look, look, there's Aaron Rodgers. Mr. Rodgers, would you throw my football? And, you know, Aaron Rodgers, like, took your football and, like, he threw it to you. You would always tell people, guess what? Aaron Rodgers threw this football, okay? So it's kind of like that for Quintus. He's going to always be able to say, do you know who threw this discus? Milo. Wait, wait, the Milo. That's right, the Milo once threw this discus. Discus longe per auras. Ewolawit. The discus flew a long ways through the air. Ewolawit is our verb, flew. Longe is what we're translating as a long ways. Now, auras is accusative plural, okay? So sometimes a language might have something in the plural where we think of air as singular, but if you think about it, I mean, air is millions upon billions of atoms of hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, etc. And, you know, it, we call it a singular, but really, um, if you think about it, you know, the Latin calling it a plural was coincidentally a little more accurate. Spectatores atletam lauda verunt. The spectators praised the athlete. Servus Miloni discum quaesivit. A slave looked for the discus. Now look what we have left here. This is a dative singular of a third declension noun or name. Okay, in this case, a slave looked for the discus for Milo. Okay, so he threw the discus like across the across the um, the palaestra, and a slave went to go fetch it. You know, that way, like Milo doesn't have to himself run down there and go get it. It's kind of like you know when you have a caddy in golf. You know, they go and look for a lost ball or something. Take note of something very important, people. This long I here. This is the date of singular ending of a third declension noun or name. Okay, that's what we have here. Mater, matrem, now matri, to or for the mother. However, that same long I on a second declension noun is the nominative plural. What this means, if you were to encounter a word you've never seen before, and it ends with a long I, you don't actually yet know if you're looking at a nominative plural or a dative singular. You're going to have to look in your dictionary, and your dictionary is going to tell you which one of those it is, and then you'll know how to translate it. Servus postquam discum invenit ad milonem redit. The slave, after he found the discus, returned to Milo. Servus atletae discum offerebat. The slave was offering the discus to the athlete. Again, dative singular of a first conjugation noun. Atleta tamen discum non acapit. The athlete, however, did not accept the discus. Discus non est meus inquit milo. The discus is not mine. This adjective meus means my or mine. Um, and there's usually more than one good way to translate a sentence that could have this. So you could say the discus is not mine. Another option could be it's not my discus. Servus quinto discum tradidit. The slave, again, here's our nominative singular. This is going to be our subject. Now, I want you just to take note of, again, another possibility for an irregular perfect tense. Tradit means hands over, okay? The perfect tense of tradit, you're going to actually double this di. It becomes tradidit, okay? So tradidit would be handed over the discus to Quintus. Tum juvenis quoque discum emisit. Then the young man also threw the discus. Discus per auras evolavit. The discus flew through the air. Did you notice what Quintus didn't do that Milo did? Milo looked around the palaestra before he threw the discus. Quintus didn't do that. Quintus just threw it. The discus flew through the air. Discus tamen statuam percussit. The discus, however, hit a statue. Remember, they put up statues to the famous athletes. 
Eheu, clamawit Caecilius. Oh no, shouted Caecilius. Statua nasum fractum habet. The statue has a broken nose. We get like the English word fracture comes from this Latin word meaning to be broken. Okay, like if you have a fracture of a bone, it's a broken bone. Um, noses just notoriously were falling off statues all the time, even in ancient times. Okay, so it's like it's the most vulnerable part. So it's not rare when we find a statue from ancient times that like this one, it's missing its nose. Quintus ridebat, Pompeiani ridebant. Quintus was laughing. The Pompeians were laughing. Milo tamen non ridebat. Milo, however, was not laughing. Cur tu non rides, rogavit uenis. Why do you not laugh? asked the young man. Milo erat iratissimus. Milo was very angry. Pestis responded atleta. Pest responded the athlete. Mea est statua. It's my statue. That is to say, in other words, it was a statue of himself. Remember, they put up statues to famous athletes. He's one of them, and Quintus just broke the nose off the statue of Milo.